Are you ready? Sure am. Okay, let's rock and roll. Michael, welcome to Cat on the Loose. Thank you for doing this. Hey, of course, man. This is awesome. You have a very successful podcast yourself. So first of all, congratulations. I really enjoy listening to it. I appreciate that. Yeah, um, it was um, it was touch and go in the beginning. Uh, a couple Same. of a uh, couple of threats in the middle there. Uh, <laughs> then people kept telling me well, I was wrong, and then eventually they became fans. It's funny, right? Because when we start a podcast, people think it's easy to get to the point where we are, but it's an uphill battle, right? <laughs> it is. I, I would say I, I had Orion Terban on um, this week. His, his episode came out today, and one of the things he's talking about is it's like two years. If you do research, it's about two years before you can really. Uh, yeah. break in, especially with YouTube, where you start getting a lot of traction. And I still think that that's probably the best place. I would put YouTube a, a, ahead of Spotify and Apple Podcasts right now, but I think they're all important. But uh, yeah, I mean, you just have to stick with it for a couple of years, I think. 100 totally. episodes, I think. Totally agree with you. It took me a little more than two years, but here we are. Yeah. So you're the C CEO of this company you call MOA Mentoring, right? Mm -hmm. Mentor yeah. Action. So for people who don't know you, my audience... Let's explain, first of all, what does it mean, man of action? How did you come up with it? Yeah. Um, so the reason why I have, uh, why I came up with that name is it was probably, I want to say fall of 2019, I was on a group call with a bunch of, a, a different coach. And um, and, I, and I was joking. I was like, man, if I, I, I'm so sick of watching these self-help coaches telling people to like feel good about themselves and, you know, burn a fucking candle and look in the mirror and, and say, I, you know, a, affirmative aspirations or whatever. I was like, I want to take action. It's like, I think the best way for a man to feel good about himself is to get a new bench press max to make some money to provide for his family and to accomplish goals with other men. So I instead, if I ever make a course, I'm going to call it men of action. And the other guy was on the call. He's like, bro, you need to copyright that. That's perfectly, that's exactly what it is. So we, we kept, we came up with the name men of action. And basically I took, uh, you know, all the data, the mistakes and the lessons that I learned over the last 25 years. So I was coaching for free, basically from 2008 to 2019. So for 11 years, but my journey probably started 2000, 2001. Uh, I used to work in a, in nightlife and, and it was just kind of like seeing the dynamic of like who the cool kids were, where the wealth was stored, what women were attracted to. I joined the military in 04. Uh, it took me about two years to get in after nine 11. There were so many people trying to get in, join the military. Uh, I got in, in, uh, in February of 04 and I was in there for seven years. And during that time, I learned about leadership. I learned about responsibility. I learned about the importance of communication. So, I, and then, and then I end up moving to Las Vegas in 2011. And I've been in Las Vegas for the last 13 years. And in that place, that's where, again, I see like Las Vegas is the best status experiment that I've ever seen in the entire world. Uh, I agree I, I, with you. But yeah. let's go by parts, okay? Yeah. I definitely want to talk about the Las Vegas scene. I saw some videos that, that you made there. I agree with a bunch of stuff you said, but I'm a mm -hmm. little, I'm not sure about all this. So what is a man of action? Is a guy that, are you talking about building relationships? Or are you talking about the guy that gets all the chicks? Because the guys out there, I have a massive, I have a really good male audience. Sure. Yeah. So in so your eyes, what is the man of action? Action. So it, it's it, it's interesting, Catherine, if you ever come on one of our calls, you know how Zoom, you can put 49 guys on the screen at the same time. Yeah. So on my calls, I usually have around 100 guys live and maybe about another 1000 guys that will watch after the, the group calls. Okay. And when we do that, what you'll see is black people, Asian people, Hispanic people, there's absolutely a complete totally a total distribution of people from Africa, people from Jamaica, all over the place. And the reason why is because the things that I discuss in my course are ubiquitous to homo sapien men, a struggle for status and a struggle for higher sexual selection. So when you ask the question, what is a man of action? A man of action is basically, it's derived from your ancestors. Your ancestors 50,000 years ago during the Pleistocene, the ones who were the most productive were the ones who had access to the most scare, most resources. They're the ones who had access to the most uh, women to, to, to breed with, to have children with. They're the ones who had the most offspring. They're the ones who had the most fruitful lives. And so throughout history, men who were productive and men who saw problems were the ones who were rewarded with the most. And so what, what I try to teach in my course is access to scarce resources, showing this on social media, access to scarce resources, competency, relevancy, and showing high status. And I teach you the skill sets of networking, communication, leadership, and dating. Dating is actually the last thing I teach you, okay, but a lot yeah. of people... They think it's the so, first thing, yeah, but exactly. that, that's what the course is. When we see your videos, you talk a lot about like, and actually I think it's one of the first things on your website. When we open the website, yeah. you have like a phrase 
oh, I will teach you uh, how to have my lifestyle, something like that, it, not, not the exact words, and, mm -hmm. and how to be surrounded by beautiful women without spending any money. And you talk a lot about the beautiful women, the beautiful women on your videos. Mm -hmm. So that's not all you, you're trying to teach them. So Catherine, the funny thing is, if you go back and watch the video, I show a lot of beautiful women. I only mention beautiful women one time during the video. Okay. It's a trick. It's like, it's some people tell me this all the time. So basically what we did as far as marketing is concerned, for those of you who are in marketing, you probably already know this. There's certain things you can't sell on meta ads. Like for instance, you can't sell a crypto course. You cannot sell a pickup dating course. So what we did was we took the word dating completely out of the course. And what we talk about is high status networking. But while I'm talking about high status networking, you see a lot of beautiful women and none of it's stock footage. All of the footage that you see comes from my real life. And that's the reason why it's been so pervasive. And we just crossed 1600 members in the program is because they, they come, they see, they maybe come on one of the free calls. And they see that everything I'm saying is true. We have 200 video testimonials on the website. And then at the end of it, they're like, okay, I understand these concepts. Catherine, here's one of the things that's very difficult for a lot of people to, to comprehend. For men especially, because men are con very uh, concerned with status, more so than, than women are, men at the highest levels of dating and men in the highest levels of business, they're actually doing the same thing. There's a great book by Oren Claff called Pitch Anything. And in the book, he talks about concepts like eliminate neediness. He talks about avoid beta behavior. This is a business book, but he's talking about dating concepts in a business book. Another great book like this is The $100 Million Offer by Alex Hermosi. If you read that book and just consider it, just like from a dating perspective, have an offer so good that people would be feel stupid for telling you no, that's where these concepts come from. And so, and I talked to Austin Dunham about this and several other people, R Rolo Tomasi, uh, uh, you'll talk to Justin Waller, they'll say the same thing, is that these guys understand that at the highest level of like persuasion, the highest level of goal-oriented communication, and the highest level of like dating the most amazing women, it's the same type of communication. And where does that all come from? Again, it comes from our evolution. Yeah, and, and that's look, the thing I teach. I agree with you. However- yeah. When people see your videos, like me, for example, you, I think it was your publicist, whoever reached out to us to have you on the show, I'm like, okay, let me check it out. And I looked, I'm like, yes, I definitely want to talk to this guy. He's obviously very intelligent. You speak extremely well and you do the very powerful videos, which I completely agree. I think it's a fantastic idea. And then like, for example, you show this nightclub and you say, oh, I worked on, and like I was saying to you before we got started, I had a house in Las Vegas for 15 years. I know yeah. the scene. Yeah. I was married to a multimillionaire. So I know the whole story. Yeah. But you talk about even your experience. You went to the club and you, you look at the dude and you're like, I want to know who is this guy that there's a bunch of women surrounding that yeah. guy. Now, I'm a woman. Uh... I know that's my opinion. And you tell me if you disagree. The guy that is usually in the, the club, maybe he's rich, but I don't think it's like a high value guy. Maybe it's a man of action guy. That's my, I have many questions sure. involved in this question because I've been in the clubs. I know the scene and the same thing with the women. Like, of course, a successful men want to be surrounded by beautiful girls. I agree. But 99% of those girls, they're also not high value women. They want free champagne. They want free dinner. They want a sugar daddy. La, 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 la. They want to, you know, create uh, content for their social media. Very, very rarely you will see like high value, really successful people in this scenario. Okay, good point. So for Catherine, the first thing is with the, the whole nightclub stuff, the reason why I take men to nightclubs is not because they need to find their wife in a nightclub. The reason why I take them to nightclubs is because nightclubs are harder. Catherine, there's this issue where women generally don't have approach anxiety when it comes to approaching men, but men have a horrible debilitating approach anxiety yes. when it comes to talking to women. And so this is something that we try to work through through what we call immersion. In fact, our course is called Vegas Immersion. Our real life courses call that. And you're absolutely right about what you're saying before, but there are a couple of other issues. Number one, while you may think that 99% of those women aren't high value, if you ask 99% of the high value women you met, have you ever been to a nightclub? Have you ever seen Tiesto? Have you ever gone out in Vegas yeah. and had a good time? They're all gonna tell you yes. No, they I completely all... agree with you. Like I yes. said, I did it for, and I still do it every now and again. Yes. I, I, I went to F1. I did CTS, all that good stuff. Yeah. I, to this day, I completely agree. But in general, okay. like I said on one of your videos, there was a bunch of girls around OJ Simpson, right? Yes. Like, Holy shit. And then there's a bunch of girls around some other dude. In by the way, by the way, hold on, hold on. Catherine, the girl that was around OJ, you remember when I said, do you want to go meet the juice? She's a PhD. 
the girl was a PhD who well, actually went to go meet OJ. That's the exception. I, so, so we keep, but the thing is, we keep saying it's the exception, but at some point we come to the realization that human beings are attracted to certain things. With men, it has to do a little bit more with physical features. And with women, it has a man's ability to procure status and resources more so than it does with his physical features. But the whole point of that, like what you say, I understand the nightclub part. A lot of people give me this criticism. They're like, Michael, I don't want to meet a girl in a nightclub. I don't. I don't blame you for not wanting to meet a girl in a nightclub. That's not my point. My point is if I take you to a, an environment and you're a man, and Catherine, this is a uniquely male experience. If I take you to a nightclub and you're a man and I take you in there and it's really loud and there's good looking guys and there are rich guys around and there's a woman there and you feel this fear to talk to her, you getting over that fear to speak to her and talking loud enough to where she can hear you in a nightclub. When I take you back to like coffee or a fucking brunch or going meeting a girl at a professional conference like CES, because you've worked through that approach anxiety in a very, very high paced high stimulus environment, then when I put you in the easy environment, it's it's very simple. An example would be, let's just say, I mean, let's say if you've seen guys fight in MMA, when they train to fight in MMA, they don't fight a, a, a guy against, they don't spar against the guy for three rounds. What they'll do is they'll spar against one guy in the first round, and then they'll bring another guy in and he'll fight in the second round and another guy in, they'll bring him in the third round. By the no, third yes, round, he's exhausted. I totally agree with you, Mark. Yeah. I talk about it on my podcast yeah. all the time that I think men are very intimidated by saying hello in public. My so this is, so we got to get them over that. Catherine, yeah, we got to get them over. We've done a million experiments. I actually had this episode a while ago. You probably would laugh. Uh, a, a girlfriend of mine said, let's walk around carrying something really, really bizarre because it's going to break the ice. So we dressed up like looking super fabulous. And we were walking around like the hottest places all over Beverly Hills carrying a plunger. And then when we walked inside the bars carrying a plunger, all of a sudden, all the guys came and it worked because it broke the ice and it made them talk. Sure. Because you're right, in general, the guy's like staring at you the whole night, but they don't approach you. And a yes. lot of women get frustrated with that. Yes. I And it's not criticism. I'm just trying to understand, like when, when a guy's in your course and you say, yeah, I'm going to take you to the, the nightclub or I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. You're talking a lot about women, women, women in general. Is this like, do you really think that's what most men like one, they just want to have a bunch of women. So, so Catherine, here's the, here's the irony, right? I kind of go where my market takes me. So I talk a lot about self-help stuff. I actually talk about astrophysics. I talk about aliens. I have a degree. I have a minor. I studied astronomy in college. I talk often about politics and I talk off about general self-help. I talk often about how to get through books very quickly. And those videos don't go very viral, Catherine. They just don't. But when I talk about the differences between men and women, it's incredibly controversial. And the algorithm eats it up. And people come into my funnel. And when they do, then they see what the rest of the course is about. Catherine, if I sat there and I was like, I'm going to teach you how to be a great leader. No one buys the course. They just yeah. don't. Because I most agree. people who aren't good leaders aren't aware that they're bad leaders. But if I'm like, hey, listen, this is a dream life. And I show them pictures of it. If you'd like to live something similar to this, come join me. And when they join, I make them read books on leadership. I'm selling them what they want, but teaching them what they need. And every guy who's gone through my course at the end comes back and says, man, I didn't know what I didn't know. And thank you for kicking my ass and taking me down this path. Because if I didn't do that, then no one else would do it. It's just like if you see U.S. Marines, they'll sit there in their dress blues afterwards and all the girls are like fawning over them. These guys are like, okay, I'm going to join the Marine Corps because that's what the girls like. Uh -huh. and, it, and they do it. But that's not why you join the Marine Corps. You join the Marine Corps because you have pride in your family and your country. That's why you do it, right? And in the end, the Marines teach you discipline. And so that's that's essentially what's going on here is that I have to, there's a bunch of guys that have ADHD. They're just looking at boobies. They don't know what they're doing in their life. And I take those those guys and I'm like, hey man, you're still good men. I'm gonna teach you some accountability. I'm gonna teach you some networking. I'm gonna teach you communication. I'm gonna teach you lead, leadership. And I will teach you about dating too. Now I'm gonna tell you, Catherine, most of the questions I do get are about dating. And that's not by by design. It's just men, when, they, when you deal with men, the majority of their frustration, if you ask me, Michael, how do I fix my sales funnel? It's not controversial. I'm going to give you a step-by-step -step way to fix a sales funnel. Michael, how do I keep my sales team happy? That's not controversial. I can give you step-by-step -step instructions on how to do that. Michael, what do I do when my girlfriend keeps thinking that I'm cheating and I'm not cheating? That's a complicated question, Catherine. And that takes a while for me to answer. And when I answer that question, everyone's ears perk up and they want to hear the answer. So uh, just because it's like, it's just the way of the world. 
when I talk about all these different subjects, the one that gets the most engagement is the one when I talk about intersexual dynamics or yeah, the, no, in, I, the innate look, like sex I differences said, between I men totally and women. I totally agree. I've been doing Cat on the Loose for almost four years now. And I do realize, and I do get messages from men all over the world that dating for a lot of guys is a challenge. They don't know how to approach women. They don't know what to say. They're very timid. They're very shy. They're afraid of rejection. So anybody out there listening that has not taken your classes yet, that maybe is not a man of action, would you give us maybe like one easy, is there an easy quick first step to like break the ice or not be so shy? Because women, I, I speak for myself and most of my girlfriends and most of the people I interview my podcast, we like when men are direct and come to sure. us and talk. I get completely turned off by, you know, shy men. I want men of action. <laughs> sure. So Catherine. So, is so, there a first step to become- So Catherine, different? if you survey women in Brazil and you survey women like millennials in the Northwest part of the United States, their answers are completely different. Oh, women yeah. in Brazil, and I've talked to women in Brazil and I've seen surveys, they like it when men are direct and come up and talk to them. Women who live in like Massachusetts or live in Oregon, they think that men coming up and talking to them constitutes sexual harassment. Oh, yeah. It's the reason, it's this gap in, in ideology that causes the problem and men become more and more afraid to approach because of the way that they're going to be perceived on social media. I'm sure you've seen these videos where guys are like walking by a girl who's like in the gym and then and then she takes the videos like, why are you staring at me? And the guy obviously did nothing wrong. And everyone in the, in the comments is like, girl, what are you doing? He did nothing wrong. It's because this generation is just not interested in men coming up and talking to them. But you asked a question, like how do you get over this anxiety and how do you come up and talk to somebody? My answer is I go up and talk to women like I go up and talk to men exactly the same way. And when I do, I usually have some kind of value proposition, an offer. And what I mean by an offer is, hey, we're going to raise money for Animal Rescue next Thursday. Wondering if you'd like to join us. I have a buddy of mine. He likes to go wakeboarding. He goes, hey, he sees a girl. He's like, hey, you seem cool. We're going to go wakeboarding on Thursday. Do you want to come with us? So it's always an offer. He does an, what he calls an invite opener. And then the other opener that I really like, Catherine, this is one of my favorite ones, is to make content with someone. So one of them is, hey, guys, we're going to make a funny YouTube video. Jump in. And you'd be shocked. And like every time I've done it, it works. Another one that I've seen are man on the street videos. You know that that whole hawk to a girl? You remember oh how the guy comes up? You remember how the guy comes up to her on the street? Well, yeah. I teach my guys just take two iPhones, walk around the street, and just, just start interviewing girls and asking them questions like interesting intersexual dynamics questions, who cheats more men or women? Uh, you know, what, what do you think about the election? Just real con And then the girls just start talking. And mm -hmm. what have you done? You've introduced yourself to somebody. And then at the end, what do you think the girl does? She goes, hey, can I get your social media? Hey, let me get your number. And so by doing that, you've gotten over that initial fear. So I either like to use social media to do an opener and, or I like to, um, I like to have like an invite opener. Hey, we're going to go do this thing afterwards. A, a, a great one is, hey, we got a table over here. Do you guys want to come over? We got too much alcohol. I do this all the time. It's like, hey guys, we got too much alcohol. Do you guys want to come over here and hang out? And I'm like literally walking away while I'm saying it. And the girls are like, yeah, let's go over there. Then no, they hang out. Like you said, you know, yeah, of course you, you, I mean, you're in Vegas. It's a party place. And yes. I, I really believe my experience from being 15 years in Las Vegas most girls are there to party and a lot of them want free booze, free dinner, free champagne, free this, free that. Like not just in Las Vegas, by the way, if you go to West Hollywood, it's the same. You go to Miami, it's the same. Any party city, it's the same. There's always a lot of girls when men offer free stuff, that's what they want. So yeah, it's an easy opening line. Now, how about the guys that are not interested, you know, in the girls that want freebies, the guys that are interested in, in the girl that you know, wants to like them for them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the problem that happens, Catherine, there's this horrible movie that came out several years ago called Hitch starring Will Smith and Hitch taught men how to make one girl like them. And that is terrible, terrible, terrible fucking advice. You mm -hmm. want to make all girls like you. You want to figure out a way. Like, again, if I go to the gym and get in better shape, I don't do it. So one girl likes me. I go, I do it because I have more options and more women like me. I don't, I, I groom my face so that more women find me attractive. I speak in a more, in a deeper tone and I speak and I try to sound more educated when I speak because I want more girls to find me attractive. This idea that I just want the good girls to like me, you are the guy who ends up marrying the wrong woman and she ends up taking half your money. Why are you what? saying that? I mean, I'm sorry. The, like if you, if you're doing all these actions, 
because mm-hmm. you want a bunch of women to like no, 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 that's not what I said, Catherine. I didn't say I want to date a bunch of women. What I no, said was I want to be attractive to a bunch of women. It, that's what I said. I said yeah. you want a bunch of women to like you, to be yes. attracted to you. Maybe you are in your single. Are you single? No, no, I have a girlfriend. We've been together for coming up on two years. Okay, so you're not in this headspace anymore, right? No, I am. No, no, I, I am. I actually think it's very important for you about that. No, no, no. Like, I, I, again, one more time. Me going to the gym, I'm not going to the gym to make women attracted to me. I'm doing it because it makes me feel better. But when I do so, women are more attracted to me. Me turning my business into an eight-figure car. The more we take care of ourselves, I always say that the world sees us from the outside. Correct. Correct, Catherine. But you said the good girls and the bad girls. And my thing is I need men to stop worrying about the good girls and the bad girls. You need to stop making this differentiation because what it does is it causes men to become hyper judgmental, which is not attractive. What they need to do is become attractive to all women. It's the Catherine. It's the guy who like I, I host a panel show and guys will be in the comments while I'm hosting me. It's me. It's me and Rolo and like eight other girls. And we'll, we're doing interviews. And the guys in the comments will be like, she's a slut. And my whole thing is like, if she's a slut and she won't sleep with you, what does that say about you, bro? That means you're a fucking loser. My whole thing is these guys, instead of Catherine, when when they start saying, I want a good girl or a bad girl, they're using that as a cope, as a shield to shield themselves from rejection. What they really need to do is become attractive to all women. Because again, if we're all descended from a few people, like again, we're descended from 60,000 people that lived 100,000 years ago. We're all descendants of this small tribe of homo sapiens. It would make sense that we'd all be attracted to similar things in, um, in our in our intersexual dynamics. So what I want men to do is understand female attraction triggers, not good girl triggers, not bad girl triggers. And the other thing I want to say this, you know, you have Iron Man and you have Captain America. Iron Man is kind of an asshole. He kind of like talks a little shit. Captain America is like the ultimate good guy, super good looking, always there to save the needy, right? But they're both attractive to women. This is the good guy. This is the all American, right? This is uh, Cristiano Ronaldo. This is the all American guy right here. Or right? this is the, I know Cristiano Ronaldo is not American, but uh, the, the, and this guy, and this guy right here is kind of the bad boy yeah, with the tattoo sleeves point. and he's a tar- yeah. bartender. Both of these archetypes are attractive to women. We need to stop thinking as men to just be attractive to good women. That doesn't exist. Those are, if you think that you're going to go to church and you're just going to find a good woman by being a good man, get ready for this country's 56% divorce rate. You are going to be taken for a fucking ride by your wife. Listen to me, gentlemen. You need to, I, again, I have a lot of clients who are, are deeply religious and they don't want to sleep with a bunch of women. I have no problem with that. But what I tell them is you need to have a bunch of women be attracted to you. You need several women to at least propose the idea of being in a relationship with you before you jump into a relationship with the first good girl you meet. If Michael, you do that, you're going to end up in disaster. Okay. So now, do you think the man of action is a high value man? Do you think it's the same thing or not every man of okay. action? Okay. So, so here's the thing with high, so because- there's a great book uh, by Cindy Messon and David Buss called Why Women Have Sex. And it goes over 237 reasons why women have sex. I have one of my good friends is Dan Bilzerian. All right. Just guys known for being with a ton of women. Dan, Dan, a lot of times when I talk to girls are like, ew, Dan's been with a bunch of girls. I would never hook up with Dan. And I'm, and my question to these women is, okay, I understand you would never hook up with Dan. Do you think any women would hook up with Dan? And they're like, No. Okay. Well, let me tell you, because I've been to Dan's house several times. There's a line of women trying to hook up with Dan. So even though you think most rich guys in the world, there's a line of women that will hook up with them. But my point is, even you think that he's not high value. If I were to say, what is the value of Real Madrid? What is the value of the the um, what is the value of the um, the New York Yankees? If I were to say, what is the value? What is the GDP value of the country of Brazil? These are set numbers. And they're set because of supply and demand. Yeah, but For we're some not reason, talking about a product. We're talking about no, no. We, but we, but that's the problem, though. We are talking about a product. Catherine. But I want to well, know in your opinion. Yes, and I'm, I'm trying. To, I'm trying to give it to you. Okay. Your value do, from the opposite sex is totally and completely derived by how high value of a person you can get to commit to you. Meaning, as a woman, your value in the sexual marketplace, not in general, if you're a cardiologist or a neurologist or whatever, that's a separate type of value. That's professional value. That's personal self-worth. Your value in the sexual marketplace is, de- is defined by how high status a man you can get to commit. And your value as a man is defined by how high status a woman you can get to commit. So if I tell you that this guy's high status and you tell me he isn't, but he has a beautiful 
incredible wife who takes care of him and she's willing to commit, his value cannot be lower than her. No matter what you say, I that's how- I agree with you. I completely yeah. agree with what you're saying. Yeah. And yeah, there's a lot of discussion, like some, of course, I, I bring a ton of, uh, you know, relationship experts, quote unquote, matchmakers on the show. And they all say like, oh, if a guy fucks around with a bunch of girls, he's not high value. But I kind of agree with everything that you're saying. A lot of very successful men, such as that, maybe they're not ready to commit. Maybe they don't want to commit. Maybe they want to have a bunch of beautiful women because it's a part of the game. I, I completely understand what you're saying. But most men that are taking your course, I'm assuming, are not as rich as he is or famous or successful as he is, correct? Sure. They're the average Joe, correct? Yes. They want to improve their lives and want yeah. to become men of action. Can you help them become a man of action, of action and higher value? Yes, it's not even a question. Absolutely. I, again, I've, if you want to go through there, you can look at the testimonials. Um, we've had numerous guys come in and often their complaint is women don't like me because of my ethnicity. They don't like me because I'm too short. They don't like me because I'm not rich enough. They don't like me because I'm not handsome enough. They don't like me because I'm too skinny, whatever the reason may be. Um, and then we work through whatever those, uh, limiting beliefs are. And then we, and generally what I'll do is like, for instance, if I had, uh, we'll just say one, uh, I have a guy who's short and let's just say he's maybe he's Indian. And he's like, well, I'm, I'm a short Indian man. I know women are not going to find me attractive, the white women that I find attractive. So what I do is I show him 20 guys that are in Men of Action who are also short and Indian who are crushing it with women, and it destroys his limiting belief. Then he's like, oh, wait. Oh, this isn't just about my looks. It isn't just about my height. I can actually do other things to show levels of status and have massive amounts of success without using money. I didn't understand this before. This wasn't apparent to me. And so I, we teach men how to do those kind of things. And as far as high value, if the question you're asking me is, would the women that they could get to, to commit to them, do, does their status increase over time? The answer is unequivocally, unassailably, immutably, absolutely, and completely yes. That so is not mean, a question whatsoever. Because I know a lot of guys out there, they're going to send me this question, but it's my curiosity. So let's say some dude out there is listening and he's a little chubby. He has a job, nine to five. He doesn't make millions, la, 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 la. And he wants to take your class uh, and better his life. And But he's not going to make more money than he does. Sure. So because you talk a lot about I think I saw something on your website, like I said in the beginning. You say, I'm going to teach you how to have my lifestyle without spending any money. How can they yes. do that without spending any money? So I don't spend any money when I go do the things. I mean, you, li you live in Vegas. You know what a comp is, right? You live. Uh, yeah, but of course I do. I, I Yes. But you live in Vegas. But the guy that lives maybe, I don't know, like I said, in Indiana or like a suburb or doesn't have access to these things, you know, to become okay. a man of action. Um, can I share my screen? Oh, wait, no, you have to make me a co-host. It's fine. Uh, so so going back to what you're saying before, if you lived in like, say, Indiana, one, one of the things we say in places that don't have like a great scene is if there is no scene, you create a scene. So for let, let's just say, let's just pick a place that's, um, let's say Gary, Indiana. You live in Gary, Indiana. What I would do if I lived in Gary, Indiana, first off, I would go and fix my social media. So I'd find the best places in Gary, Indiana to take cool photographs that show that I'm just an adventurous, cool guy. And that I get it, that I get it when it comes to social media. Then I might travel a little bit and get some other cool photos and places that I've traveled and some cool experiences with me and groups of friends. That's why I wanted to share my screen with you so I could show you like some of my clients, um, some of the things that they're able to do. Now, from that standpoint- By the way, I love that idea and I yeah. completely, completely agree with you. Yeah. I think having a good, decent, fantastic social media page is crucial because it's our business card yes. that totally changes the way I call, agree with you 1 million percent. That's yes. a fantastic idea. So that's the number one thing I can do, right? Because it's the most scalable thing. Even if your social media is at a 60% and in person you're an 80%, you're still at the, your social media is 100,000 X more likely to get to more people than it than you in real life. So now, so we start doing, we start showing pictures of you in cool places. We start showing a pictures of you with a group of people and they're sort of reacting to you and they catch you in these cool scenes. If you guys want to go look at my Instagram, you can see some photos that I use as, as, as examples. I don't, I try to stay away from the dating photos, like the close up headshots. M women are not interested in a man's close up headshot. Maybe one is fine, but you, this is not, this is not a Tinder, Bumble, or Hinge. It, it, a great way to explain this is women want the Barbie. They want the Barbie, but they want all the things Ken comes with. Does that make sense? 
<laughs> they want the actual Barbie doll, but they want all the little accessories that Ken, Ken comes with. Yeah. What women want to see from a man on his social media is all the accessories he comes with. And I don't mean wealth. I mean, is he in good shape? Like, what is, like, what? who are all yes. the other people that are following him? So you can show massive amounts of social proof and pre-selection through your social media. So that's what I would do. Now, from that point going forward, once I have my social media fix, I would start creating lists of men and women that I want to network with. What I like to say is women who you'd like to have come to your birthday party and men who you'd like to have come on your podcast or women you'd like to have come on your podcast as well. I make two different lists. And then from those lists, what I do is I'll usually hire a guy for like five bucks an hour and they'll go and they'll message all those people using my Instagram. Because my Instagram is good, it's set up correctly. The likelihood of them opening my messages is extremely high. I also recommend you guys all get the blue check mark on Instagram. It makes it much easier and also switch to a business account. You're far more likely to not get put in the request folder. So you'll do that and you'll get a bunch of open threads with people. Now, once I have these open threads, what I'm going to do is I'm going to contact the SPCA, the VFW. I'm going to contact a homeless shelter an orphanage, different places like that. And I'm going to throw a charity event somewhere in my city. Hopefully I'm not going to throw the charity event. I'm going to help them throw an event and I'm going to invite every female influencer in my city. I'm going to invite a bunch of photographers and I'm going to turn this into a huge social media thing while at the same time raising money for ALS, homeless children, raising money for troops overseas, raising money for animal rescue, whatever it is. And I'm going to create a social network in Gary, Indiana, doing something like that. In yeah. other words, you just proved, and this is how I live my life, and, and that's the message I always send out, where there is a will, there is a way, and it's all about how you decide to go about your life, right? Like you said, you got to be in shape. If you're sitting at home drinking beer and eating crap, you're not going to get to that point. If you live in a shitty city, there is a social media platforms that can connect us with people all over the world. So it's not just people that live in Las Vegas or Beverly Hills like I do that can have access to a better lifestyle, but you got to be motivated to get it done. Like you are, you're obviously you're a super motivated guy. I am the same, but a lot of people out there are not. So I guess if anybody out there is listening, this is a great way to become motivated by taking your cars because you're going to tell them step by step by step, no matter where, yes. right? Yeah, and that's I also, exactly right. I'm being very transparent. Some of your videos, I wasn't sure about them because of all this, you know, girl, la, 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 all this bullshit. But you have very practical ideas that really, really work. Yes. Now, those practical ideas that, are, that really, really work, Catherine, if I put those in a tweet <laughs> or in a YouTube video, nobody cares. They don't. Now, once they get in the course, they do. But initially, all they want is the sizzle before they want the stay. That's the thing is people want something like an easy way out, right? Correct. But the fact is, sometimes you got to do the work. You got to put in the work. Like we were talking about the podcast. I get messages every single day from men and women. They're like, oh, I want to start a podcast. I want to make money. And I start laughing because they think it's going to be something like overnight, And it's kind of like you said, having a fabulous body or being in great shape. It's something that you work on your whole life. It's not like you wake up and after a week, you're going to have a great body, right? Yeah, definitely. Unless you take Trembolone and steroids and other stuff. (laughs) But But yeah, for the most part, it's not going to. But even if you do, you know, like if you're drinking. (laughs) Shout out to everyone in Las Vegas. Shout out to all the the male strippers and VIP house in Las Vegas. Soon we got to meet in person and (laughs) some videos go out and about. Before I run out of time, I saw another video that I thought was very, very interesting. So I want to discuss that for a second. You talk about high status men, high status women and low status men. Yes. And you're like. Yeah, go ahead. You yeah, I, sta- I, I stand by this. I know it's politically incorrect, but it's just absolutely true. I don't know if it's true. politically incorrect. It, that I don't it, care if it is, it, but it's I think definitely. it's very interesting. So let's ready, explain. Ready what for, for any, I will debate anyone on this topic. There are three genders, high status men, women, and low status men. Low status men are chasing after women. Women are chasing after high status men. And the reason why I say there's three genders is because high status men and low status men have nothing to do with each other. If you really look at the, and there's a book called The Winner Effect that goes over the neurochemistry of men who are successful and the ones who aren't, you like literally high status men have different brains than low status men. High status men have higher lifetime earnings, more sexual partners, more likely to keep a marriage working, have more children in general. Like when you find out these, these, these different then you'll understand high status men and low status men have nothing to do with each other. When you come, when you listen to women complain and they'll be like, oh, you know what? I can't stand these men. They're all nothing but shit. They all drive around in their Bugattis and they have like six but girlfriends Michael, and they think they can buy well, me. And I'm like, kind of, most men don't have a Bugatti, dude. But wait a second. What kind of women complain? I think the women that complain, it's 
usually that's my opinion because i agree with everything you're saying one million percent i agree and i would debate anybody on that but usually the women that complain are like i said these women that they can't keep up the guy that the girl that complains oh you know i had sex with him and he ghosted me I, he took me to the club last night and now he's fucking somebody out usually it's just the bimbo She's not on Catherine, the Catherine, I don't I don't level. I don't think anyone came into this saying I'm gonna be a bimbo. I legitimately think they all oh, come into this. Be thinking, shocked. No, no, really? I, okay, all right, all right, oh. all right. I do think so. I know a lot. I live in Vegas. You lived here for a while. You just <laughs> go to this fucking grocery store and you're gonna see sex workers. Yeah. Like, and some of them are my friends, and I'll ask them legitimately, did you move here to become a prostitute? I'll ask them. So did you move here to start filming porn? And a lot of them were like, No, I moved here with my boyfriend. You know, I was I was in love. I was just trying to oh, find listen, love, I and then I met this guy, and it just uh, it just seemed attractive. And yeah, the next I thing you know, she's sleeping with a male stripper. And then like, but yeah. it's like this idea that like nobody goes into life thinking I can't wait to get addicted to heroin. Nobody really starts off their life being like, man, I can't wait to start filming porn. It's like one of these things that happens. But what I'm just saying is they end up in these situations. These are normal people, yeah, but and they're yes. normal stimulus, and they listen. just they just don't react to the stimulus properly. And the next thing you know, that they're like fucking on camera. That's what happens. Look, I don't blame them. I, I don't blame anybody. Yeah. I completely yeah. agree with you. I did an episode of my show at the Sapphire, by the way. I talked yeah. to all the girls. I'm still, I still have connections with some yeah. of them. I don't judge anybody in this life. I'm speaking about dating. A lot of the girls, like you, you gave the Miami example in one of your videos. Oh, the guy with the Bugatti. And like you said, there's maybe two Bugattis in Miami. I don't know. But those girls, a lot of them, that's literally what they're looking for. Yeah, I just, I don't, uh, Catherine, if what, if, Catherine, if what you're saying is true, then what we should be able to see is on dating apps, we should be able to go there and see women choosing men who make $60,000 a year and are five foot nine. And we don't see that. What we see is almost all women selecting men who are six feet tall and make over $200,000 a year. Like no, they, it, you, you're, you're, you're coming up with this idea that there's only a few women who are bimbos who have this unrealistic expectations of men. And I'm here to tell you, it's 90% of women who have unrealistic expectations of men. It is it out right now. It doesn't no, mean no. it doesn't mean that they're going to date men who are all six foot three. But they are going to desire men who are six feet yes. tall and make yes. make a fucking ton of money. That's yes. what's going on. And so because of that mismatch, women are pricing the price of sex here. Men are pricing the price of sex here. And because of that, they don't meet. And we have the lowest level of marriage ever. We have yeah. the lowest number of people hooking up ever. We have sixty three percent of men under the age of thirty are single. We've we ended up in a situation. We are in a sexless society. That's where we got. We show more, we show more OnlyFans, Instagram, pornography. We show more, we have sex less. That's where we've ended up because we have these two unrealistic un uh, uh, understandings of like what the world will give us. And the reason why is because we have too many options visually that aren't really options. Women are left swiping on men on dating apps that could never date. And men are watching pornography of women they could never date. And it's screwing up their fucking brains. And that's the reason why we have this disconnect. I completely agree with you. Maybe I didn't express myself well. I agree that it's most women. Yep. I guess my point was this man, right? That drive the Bugatti, that, makes, yep. that make millions. And I have many friends like that. Most of the time, the ones that are single, yeah, of course they're going to go through dozens and dozens of women, but they are usually going to marry and couple with somebody who is more up to par with where they are in life. At least that's my experience. All my millionaire friends, people that I know, that's who they end up with. And this is why these girls get so frustrated because most men of very high value, they, when they decide, okay, I'm ready to get married and settle down, they want a partner that is not going to embarrass them in public, that's going to travel the world with them, that knows how to speak well, that knows how to dress, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. They're not going to go for that girl that looked crazy sexy on the beach in South Beach yes. or at the nightclub in Las Vegas. That's but my, and it happened but, but, to me, by but, the way, you know? But Catherine, most women won't ever get with any high status men other than to just have sex with them. Totally one agree. Exactly. Totally and so, so like, look, and so what is the majority? Remember I said about 15% of men are high status men. And then you have a hundred percent of women. And then you have 85% of men that are low status men of those 85%. They will marry a woman who embarrasses them in public. They will marry, marry a woman who will get morbidly overweight, cheats on them and takes out their money. They will, because they have no options. The bottom third of men have almost no options whatsoever. Dating has become incredibly inequitable towards a small group of men at the top. And those are the men women are complaining about. They're not complaining about about the men at the bottom because they don't even see those men. They don't even recognize those men exist. 
That's the, po the point that we've gotten to right now is they don't even see them. At least as a man, if I see grandma on the side of the road and she has a flat tire, I'm going to pull over and try to help her because I at least see grandma. I see her. I yeah. have some guy friends of mine that are like five foot five in Filipino and women don't even remember that they were in the room with this guy. They yeah. don't see these men it's when they're true. not attracted to them. Because That's the difference. Can. We see, like, and I tell people that all the time, take care of yourselves because it doesn't matter how big of a fabulous heart you are or your ethics, the world sees us from the outside in. If you take care of yourself, many more doors are going to open for you. Like you said, including in dating, including relationships, even business, right? If you look like shit, you're not going to get the same success in any area of your life than a, a person that takes great care of themselves. I think that's general, you know? Uh, it happened to me, Michael. When I met my husband, he was a multimillionaire. I was successful in my own right. I had a bunch of modeling contracts. I owned my own business. I was 23, year old, 23 years old. I had college degrees. At the time, he had, like you say, like on your videos, he was partying in Vegas with 50 chicks. He was spending $50,000 a night in a, one of the top strip clubs. He did all this shit. He would bring all these Playboy bunnies to his mansion. Yeah. Of course, I wasn't the prettiest. I'm not the tallest. I wasn't the skinniest. I know I'm beautiful. I know I'm sexy. I love sex, which obviously guys are attracted to me because they know I love sex. Like, and, and I'm not embarrassed to speak about it because I think it's important, right? Because the American culture suppresses women when they say that. But the reason why he was so attracted to me is because I had all this shit going on. I didn't give a fuck about his money. I didn't want him to buy me a BMW. I drove my own BMW. I had my own shit going on. I think in general, that's the kind of women that high value guys choose as a lifetime partner at the end of the day. Do you agree? Um, high status men, yes. Most yeah. men, no. Most men choose very poorly. Most men I choose said. just because of the best physical attractiveness that they can get. Yeah. Most men do not choose. And, and I know a lot of high status men that didn't choose poorly, choose well either. I think what happens if you spend your entire life working on money and you don't understand the opposite sex, you end up get, becoming a target. I think it becomes very, I and mean, this is the same for men and women. Like you just become a target. And so I, I just, I see so many people to like, if you want to have a great conversation, you should talk to James Sexton. He's a divorce attorney. And he just goes over to these people who are just mismatched and just choose horribly. And I think we're choosing even worse because what's happened is because of social media, we have so many ways of giving false indicators now. So many ways of making ourselves look better than we actually do, richer than we actually are. We have so many ways of doing this. And so because of that, you just see people actually end up ending up in worse situations. Yeah, that is so true. So everybody out there listening to us, your course is exclusively for men, right? Yes. Oh, so women women can come on the course. It's just, we, you don't have to pay. Like we just let women join the calls. Oh, wow. Okay, girl. So yeah. if you're out there yeah. listening, if you want to learn. So let's say a girl, let's say me. I'm like, I yeah. want to learn something. Yeah. Are we in the same Zoom with all the dudes? Yeah, you're in the same Zoom with everybody. So, so some, somewhere, it. it's usually between like one and eight girls will come on a call okay. and they'll just be asking questions. It just, I haven't found that women like really, and like, unless a, a girl's really interested in like leveling up her social media or something like that, then and in that case, that's something different. But like Katie Moore, she's been on calls for years. Uh, my friend, Andy Candy, Kindly Myers. There's a bunch of girls that come on the calls uh, on a regular basis. They're friends of mine, but we don't charge women to come on the calls. That's pretty awesome. So if a yep. girl there is listening and she wants to know the inside scoop, what you teach guys, what kind yep. of guys out there, they can just go and find you on your social just, media. Yeah, find me and then say, I, then what I'll do is on the Tuesday call, I'll just send her the link and then she can jump on with us. That's very generous of you, Mike. Uh -huh. It sounds yep. like you're helping a lot of people. Sounds like you're helping a lot of men out there. Congratulations on your fabulous work. I appreciate that. Thank you. you. And and I got before I let you go, one thing that I completely disagree with you, and I will challenge you next yeah. time I invite you to come to LA. You said there are no pretty girls around here. <laughs> no, what I said was the pretty girls are in Palisades, they're in uh Beverly Newport, Hills. They're, in Be they're in Beverly Hills. I'm like in LA proper. I'm there talking about from Hollywood down Hollywood all the way down to like Figueroa. No, <laughs> they're not. They're not a hot. There's oh hardly God. any pretty girls there, dude. Go there out to a club a in Hollywood girl. and you tell me, no, go to a club and go to a club in Hollywood. Okay, here, do this one time. All right, ready? Go on stage at XS for Rufus the Soul. Look at the girls there and then go to Warwick on a Saturday night in Vegas or in Los Angeles and you tell me that there's pretty Warwick girls. Is. Yeah, I don't even exactly. know. You don't even know what Warwick is. That's exactly <laughs> my point. Like go to the, go to Poppy. 
go to fucking nice guy, go anywhere you want in Los Angeles and compare those girls to the ones in Vegas. And you tell me that they're pretty girls in Los well, Angeles. Vegas, they're pretty everybody... girls in Orange County. There's no, they're not pretty, pretty girls in LA. No, LA is it. so overrated. LA is so overrated. Beverly Hills. If you're talking about a Beverly Hills mansion party, of course. Yes, definitely. But most guys can't get into those. So we that, that's are not always what we're on about. our A game. Yeah, I think because yes. I live in Beverly Hills and work in West Hollywood, and we are always on our A game here sure. because, you know, it's such a competitive market. But I do agree with you. When people go to Vegas, they're like, let me be on my A game because sure. I'm going to meet a celebrity. The, they're going to let me go into the hottest club. So, yes, if everybody out there is listening, any suggestions like, how do you get in these parties without paying? How do you get in these clubs without paying? Just dress fabulously is that the key oh there's a there's a bunch of different ways but for men it actually does help a lot if you dress really well i have guys and they're like hey man i just have trouble like getting into a club and i'm like just, just dress better than everyone else and show up with a couple of girls and you're going to get in every single time so yeah that 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 would be probably the easiest way to do it fantastic tell me your instagram again for like uh, it's it's michael sartain just go look up michael sartain yeah s-a-r-t-a-i-n on um instagram and just just check me out there um you know write me and if you're interested in joining Fantastic. Our school group, uh, it's a, there's a free school group you can join. Uh, no, no, uh, no investment needed, no contract needed. You can just, uh, it's very easy. You just join our free school group. It's men about it's school.com S K O O L.com forward slash men of action free. There's a hyphen in between each word, men hyphen of hyphen action. Uh, and then, or if you're interested in joining MOA, it's MOA mentoring.com. Amazing. I'm definitely going to put your link on this episode. If you guys are listening, go to YouTube so you can see his face.